Well, praise God. Um, you know, I, I need to start this off uh, this morning. I, I see that the time is moving on, and, and I know that moms are important, and they probably got lunch appointments and things like that today. So I'm cognizant of that. So um, um, last week, um, I, I must uh, apologize because last week I was trying to wrap it up um, on my Mythbuster series, and I have crammed it so full, um, and so it was, um, it was stuff pack, and I couldn't finish it anyhow, so this is great. I've got a, a few minutes to, to carry on, and, and so I will, uh, I will finish that off, and <laughs> hopefully, maybe I shouldn't say that right now. No, I am playing it. Oh, I forgot to tell you about this other Mother's Day gift that we have, a special today. Moms, you know, we are going to give you 10 years off your age, today only. So, well, you know, so you can take 10 years off your age. And if you're Miss Charlotte and you're 100, you can take 30 years off Miss Charlotte if you're watching. 30 years off, you know, today, oh, that's a special that we got going on. But um, anyhow, it's good to see Terrence in the house, uh, Ter Terrence Jr. It's so good to have you, T. I'm Terrence Jr. I'm, I'm where, I know that you're heading back out to wherever you, I'm not allowed to tell, am I? Does it matter? It's out now. It's out now. <laughs> T's yeah, a Marine. He serves in, internationally, and, and he's at an embassy out there, and we appreciate you. We, we think about you and pray for you. This is an awesome young man. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, great man. His brother, his younger brother, is also in the Marines somewhere. I don't even know where, where Lewis, North Carolina right now. He's going to Hawaii. Well, that's, that's, so Lewis gets Hawaii and shame. Boy, sorry, Terrence. <laughs> Man, oh, the Dems family. The Dems family are blessed. That's awesome. Um, I also want to uh, mention this: that um, yesterday, Karis uh, Orlando, uh, the Holes had a. There was a graduation, second year graduation. So we had a, a number of our folks that got graduated second year. Karis, so big congratulations to Janine, and um, that's awesome, and to Hannah, and there's other people. We've got others in the pipeline that are, that have, had finished or first year, and some are doing part time. But but uh, we were down there, and it was great to great to witness that and. In fact, you know, um, Janine said to me last week, and I, had, I, I, I just totally, totally loved it because I was talking about Revelation 12. As you know, I've been talking about, uh, my series title has been Mythbusters because we've been talking about Satan and, and how disempowered he is, how he isn't a feature in our lives. We know his devices, and if you've been following, and please do, if you haven't been following the series, please do follow the series because um, in context, it's, it's really powerful to grasp uh, the truth about how we are not under his thumb, he's under our feet. And knowing exactly where he is lives, gives us the ability to be more than conquerors and live more than conquerors. So um, I was reading from Revelations, well, I just didn't read from it last week, I mentioned Revelations 12, when, it's, when I mentioned them, and they conquered him by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony, and I forgot to say, which I was corrected by a Bible college student, <laughs> Because they loved not their lives unto the death. Right. So they conquered him by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. It's a powerful truth. So I was like, yes, thank you, Janine. Appreciate that. <laughs> so, um, but it's, um, but you know, you know, he has, he, his time is short. Satan is in this world. He is, and I'm not going to repeat everything, uh, but he is in the world. He has gone, it says in the end of that chapter, that he has gone to make war against those that obey the commandments and keep to the testimony of Jesus. That's you and I. And there is, a, there is a battle, but not what we have to win. And we've gone through all of this, that we are more than conquerors, that he was defeated and disarmed. And so it's important to understand um, that, that exactly what role we play so that you do not live in fear, but you've got the ability to do and you are free to do what he has commanded us to do. You are free to live the life and be, live, you know, there's, there's only one way to live a, a Christian life, and that's to, to experience his complete satisfaction and fulfillment is to do it his way. And so, um, and so this is a foundation, as I said, right in the beginning about how you believe. You know, there's a, there's a big difference. I want, to, I want you to listen carefully. What you say you believe, even what you may uh, even uh, agree or intend to say that you believe and what you actually believe are very different. 
You can agree to believe something. You know, I can read the Bible and say, yeah, yeah, I, I know that. I knew that Jesus died on the cross. But, but you know what? When you, un- when you understand what he's done for you and pay- make it personal and you put that belief in your heart that, you know what? He really did pay for my sin. My sin really is being paid for. He took the punishment that brought me peace. Do you know that I could say, and I did for years, I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that he died on the cross. But when that took that belief, that belief became mine in my heart, did I experience peace? No longer did I expect punishment because guess what? My punishment was handed out 2,000 years ago on that cross. The punishment for that sin, yes, that one, that one that comes to mind, that punishment was poured out on Jesus on the cross. And until you, so I can intend to believe something or say that I believe something, but I, do I actually, have I actually impregnated my heart with the truth? Have I taken the seed of the word of God and let it bear fruit in my life until that belief is mine? When that belief is mine in my heart, then it changes my life. It changes how I look at the world. It literally does. It changes how I feel emotionally. You know, I, I had all these ideas about the devil, and, and, and you know, it talks, and we've spoken about the fear that we have when, well, when we've had, and it talks about us being delivered from our fear of death, because we, we can be, if we're living in fear of death, let me tell you, if you, and, and most people do, even most Christians live in fear of death. It says in 1 John chapter 4 that if you live in fear of death, that you're not made perfect or you're not made complete in love. You should not fear death at all. And there's a place to live in your life where you do not fear death at all, but look forward to the day that you step into eternity. And you know what? It's going to be good. You know, so we're not supposed to live in fear. And so, so make a decision that if you want to abandon, like I said, if you want to live a satisfied life, you have got to be prepared, be prepared to take these seeds of the word of God that you heard and, and let them grow in your life and grow established. I said this right in the beginning that there is difference between beliefs and unbelief. I mentioned this a few, even last week. When a counter belief, we, we, have, we have beliefs that are ours that uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 talks about through our experiential knowledge. We, we participate in the divine promises, etc., etc. All of these things are ours, right? But if we have a counter belief, if we have an untruth, an unbelief that we are carrying in our hearts, it's, it, it's going to negate the belief that we have. It's going to, let me put it this way, the truth is still the truth. The truth will make us free, correct? But I will not be able to experience it emotionally if I believe a counter-truth, a compromising truth. I said this again in the beginning, and a little example is this. I can believe, um, I, I, if I believe that Jesus is a healer, oh yes, he's a healer, he can heal. Okay, is he your healer? And then he's like, uh, well, and you know, we can have a counter belief that I've discredited or I'm disqualified from, from being healed because maybe it's not God's will, untruth. Maybe I haven't paid enough tithe, untruth. Maybe I've sinned too much and I won't be able to get my healing because I've sinned, untruth. But you see, I can carry those untruths in my life and I can say with my mouth, oh, I believe Jesus heals. And I will not experience it because I'm waiting for judgment. I'm waiting. I believe that God's caused this. I even tell people, well, I don't know what God's teaching. God's teaching me something through this. Because we're carrying untruths. We have to remove the untruths with the word of God. We, we are renewed. Our minds are renewed. And as I've said, we put off the old man, renew our mind. We wash our mind with the word. We renew our mind so that we can put on the new man. And that's how it's, it's often not, I don't need to believe more that Jesus is my healer. That, you know, people say, well, you just have more faith. What? You either believe something or you don't. That's like saying, oh, do you believe the sun is going to rise tomorrow? Well, yeah. Okay, now I want you to really believe it. <laughs> what? You either believe it or you don't. That's why Jesus said all it takes is a mustard seed. You either believe it or you don't. But we've got this like, well, I've got to have superhuman faith. And it's, no, you've just got to remove the unbelief. And that's where the devil, the stuff, the series that I've been getting to is about. Because I've tried to re- remove things. And I promise you, I, couldn't, I can't teach it all 
in a series because you'd get bored, you won't listen to it, you'll tune out. But it is important that, oh, that you, um, you build these things into your life. You know, I, I made a, a statement about demon possession throughout this, 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 this series. And so I've had a few people question, well, Shannon, don't you believe in demon possession? Because I've, I've, I thought I've explained it. And, I, and just to clarify, let, let me just tell you a little story. Um, as you know, for my 20s and to my 30s, I traveled in Africa, southern and central Africa. And some of the, the country of Zambia was one of our frequent destinations. We worked in Mozambique and Zimbabwe and, and Botswana a little bit, and, but it was the southern African region. And Zambia at the time had been, Kenneth Kowinda had been a dictator for 30 years, um, um, and he devastated the country. There was nothing in the country. It had just come into a Christian leader's hands, uh, and it, we were working in early days. The roads were devastated. There were potholes everywhere. There were two, two garbage trucks for the city of Lusaka, which was their main city. Two working garbage trucks. You can't, you can't imagine the devastation that we got. But we would go there, and we would do crusade after crusade, and we would do these little towns, these outlying towns in, in these far places, and some of them took ages. I mean, you wouldn't believe. To get 30 miles sometimes took you a day because the potholes were that bad, just driving through them. I mean, you were down in potholes and out through potholes. In fact, I had a Zambian tell me, yes, here we have our PhD in driving. He says, you've got to be a pothole dodger, you know? So, so I was like, and it, it was one of those things. And one day we were doing a crusade far, far out. It was like, even uh, our, the evangelist that we were coming in, he flew in because it took us so long to get in there. So he, the light aircraft came in there and, um, uh, the, it was a very interesting crusade. I mean, and I found this thing to be true. I've told you many times. Crusades, we would see a lot of demonic possession. We'd see lots of people come, uh, uh, you know, when we started preaching the gospel, we would see people start manifesting. And, and, and I noticed this thing. The further we were from civilization, the further we were from light, the word, I'm not talking physical light, I'm talking about the light of the gospel. The further we were from this, the more we saw. But when I came into churches, and I put it, and I came back into the Western world, and I would be back, and I, most of the stuff, the times I didn't see real possession by comparison. Most of the time that I saw that, it was flesh. People manifesting because they were looking for attention. Most of the time, it was that. It was like, just take this person, get them out, and then suddenly they stop manifesting. Get them out of their place, flop down and fall around, drag them out where nobody can see them, and suddenly they stop manifesting. It's all about flesh and distraction and things like that. So we, we learned this. Um, there was this one um, witch doctor that we found later. He was, he was like, he was growling, like, you know, you've heard stories. I saw it exactly. He was round, uh, running up and down behind the stage. He came behind the stage, and he was, he was acting weird, like a, a leopard or something. And uh, he was growling and rolling around like this. And I was like, what the heck? And we, you know, I, I even had a video camera. Probably still, it's probably on some tape somewhere that Ed's got. Anyhow, and I, was, I started filming. You know, this guy was growling up and down, up and, up, up and down. And so, um, and I knew what was happening. And so we saw this and we just, I mean, we just cast the devil out. And, and the next night he was in his right mind and he brought a bunch of his paraphernalia, his witch doctor paraphernalia, including part of a human skull that he used to drink out of. And he claims that he used to kill people spiritually, I mean, through demonic power. He's clear, he claimed he killed this person, this person, this person, family members, everybody feared him in the whole town. But you know, we didn't, we didn't even for a hint of a minute did we fear that. We were so used to the power of the gospel, the light of the gospel shining, and we, it was no problem. I, I, so I, I've experienced that and many other times that I've seen real possession. But as I've told you, I don't believe that a believer can actually be possessed. You have, if you're born again, you have the Spirit of God inside of you. He doesn't come and go. He lives and He dwells permanently abiding within you. I love Reinhard Bonnke. How many of you know Reinhard? Reinhard used to do the big cities. And Reinhard had this voice. And he would say, I don't be. He said the same thing I just said to you. And he would say, can a fly sit on a hot plate? I mean, he was talking about the, the, the cooker top, you know, like on your stove. He says, can a, can a Christian have a demon? Well, let me ask you, can a fly sit on a hot plate? You know, <laughs> you know it's like... And, and, you know, the, the, the truth is that when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, He is the one that you are possessed with. Yes. 
And like I've said to you previously in this, you can yield as a Christian. You know, there's good pastors in prison, right? Like really good people. You can yield as a Christian. You can yield to the voice of temptation. You can yield to anger. You can yield to stuff that is not consistent with the word of God. Or you can yield to the spirit of God. How many of you know that? You can, it can be as simple as exceeding the speed limit or as dangerous as throwing a brick at somebody. There's people that have made mistakes, honest mistakes, in a fit of rage, in a fit of anger. You can yield to something. Some of these things are demonically, I believe, inspired. And we, uh, we as we, so do I believe that people can te- technically be possessed? Yes, I've seen it. But I'm telling you, as a believer, you get to choose if you will or you won't. You get to choose if you will yield or you won't yield. It's up to us to put off the old man, renew our mind, and put on the new man, as I've said. That is your and my choice. Every day, every moment. I wish I could say, I will never yield to, those, to any other spirit. Listen, if I put you in the, wrong, in, the, in the right environment or the wrong environment for long enough, what's going to happen is going to happen. Jesus said it this way. He talks about the continuum. I've taught about this before. As a continuum before, if you, um, if you say that you, you, you get angry at your brother, it says you're a murderer. What? Do you, you remember that scripture? Yeah. I don't have it. He says, if you're angry at your brother, Jesus said you're a murderer. <laughs> what? Because it's the continuum of the truth that if you get ticked off that badly at your brother, I put you in the right environment and you would resort to murder. It's the same thing as I said. What is the difference? But what is H2O? It's a great example. What is H2O? Anybody know? Well, is it always water? What happens if I change the environment to below zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit? Ice. Is it still H2O? What happens if I take it above 100 degrees Celsius? Does it turn into steam or water vapor, etc., etc.? So is it still H2O? Yes, it is. What about snow? What about sleet? All of those are still H2O. So the only thing that changes is its environment. You can can change your environment all your way, but you have to deal with your heart. That's what Jesus was talking about. He said, if you just look at a woman lustfully, you've committed adultery. Same thing. It's a continuum. If I'm going to distort and I'm going to incubate a desire and plant a seed in my my life about, and, and I focus on it, guess where I'm heading? Ooh, got very quiet very suddenly. <laughs> Listen, guys, this is what makes the good news the good news. Because um, we, just looking at my time over here, we, 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 we have got a kingdom cause to live for, and we've got to understand um, Matthew 6, verse 30. I'm going to start at verse, you know this well, but I'm going to start at 31. Matthew 6, 31. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for, its, uh, will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So he's talking about seeking first. I just had in my heart someday, one day I'd like to do a series on firsts. Because when I tell you what, if you go through the scripture and you just look at what, when Jesus said, do this first, or do this above all else, there's a bunch of above all, do this. First, do this. First, do that. Listen, when Jesus says, do something first, listen up. There's a reason. Amen. So in any case, but, but we see here, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you seeking first the kingdom when we become born again when you when you call out to Jesus and it says if those are called in the name of the Lord will be saved right and so when you call out to Jesus and you get saved and he becomes you make him lord of your life he's not just saved you make him lord of your life then he is in charge he gets to call and like I said this fulfillment this satisfaction comes when we live life his way When we walk in his path, when we do it his way, we are going to live satisfied lives. I'm telling you, you're going to, as you grow and you walk in his way, no longer are you going to say, I don't know what the meaning of life is or what my purpose of life is. You'll know. 
Because every child of God is going to do this. We seek first His kingdom. We want to establish His kingdom in the world. You've heard it in, in Matthew 28. And when Jesus said, all authority, and I'm reading verse 18, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me. Go, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. There's a lot there. Jesus is gonna be with us always, but this is the point. Make disciples, teach people to obey. There is a kingdom purpose that we're living for. As you hear me say so often, that doesn't mean you all have to become evangelists, but we all participate, we all bring our share, our part of the body to that end. When we live that, I'm, I've been there, dude. I mean, it's like you can work at 7-Eleven, and if God's calls, caused you to work at 7, called you to work at 7-Eleven, you will be the most excitable 7-Eleven worker that there is. You can, you can be dramatic, you can be powerful, and, and I'm telling you, you will defect people's lives. I've seen a newspaper salesmen before. We used to, when they used to sell newspapers in South Africa at the traffic lights, we call them robots. Don't get it in your mind, but we just, just a word. We call them at the robots, you know, the guys would wash your windows or sell papers or whatever the case is. So at the, but there's one guy that I used to stop at, and he, this guy was on fire. It was like everybody else would just sell stuff. Not him, man. He was, woohoo! He was like, oh, it's like no matter when you came up to the, this guy was like turned on. He was happy. Always. No, he had purpose selling newspapers. Get a reason. So I mean, you see, we, we, look, we think it's going to be the thing that we do. It's not the thing what they do. It's why we're doing the thing. Amen. Your motive for why you're doing the thing is going to change stuff. So um, in, in Mark 16, we see very similar. Um, Jesus said, whoever believes in, uh, reading verse 16, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. There you go. We will, we can, it's ours, easy, no, easy peasy. You don't have to worship and sing anything special or anything, you just tell the demon to leave, it's gone. Okay, and they will speak in new tongues, whoa. It does, yeah, new tongues is a thing. Not just for the apostles, right? They will pick up serpents in their hands, they drink, uh, 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 they will pick up serpents with their hands. Listen, we don't have a box of snakes back here. Okay, it's not saying, it's just like, they will, but it's just saying that you can live a supernatural life when you put priorities first. And I've experienced that firsthand. It's fun, it's adventurous to live a life on the edge. Amen. You can, you can. It's, it, I'm telling you, that's where you find meaningful life is let Jesus seek first the kingdom of God. And he says, that, um, it will not hurt them and they'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Yes, it doesn't say, come and let Steve and Elise pray for you or Keith pray for you, our prayer team. We've got an awesome prayer ministers. But it's not, it, you and I have that ability. You just don't know about it because you've got too much unbelief stuck in you. Counter beliefs. I'm not saying that you don't mean that or whatever. I'm just saying, that there's this process. We've got to release the uns. We've got to pull out the uns, the counter beliefs. We've got to weed our garden of the garden of our gardens of the gardens of our heart. We've got to weed out those things that are the counter beliefs. Are you willing? That's your choice. I wish there was one little magic prayer that you could say and those things. No, you're going to be confronted, as I've said many times. When you hear truth, truth will come to you and you will have to choose, what am I going to do with this? And you know what most people do? They lift up their spiritual heart rug and they just want to just sweep it under the rug and pretend I didn't hear that. Because they don't want to deal with it. But you see, the problem is that that's why things don't work in your life. Not because God wills or will, doesn't will it to it. It's because you want, you've, got to, you've got to garden the, God, the beliefs in your heart. Are you believing the gospel or aren't you? Right? Okay, so what is the gospel? I love this, this passage. Um, and I'm going to read it out of the King James Version. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. But if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world 
That's what Satan is named. He's called the God, little g, the God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That is, sorry, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 and 4. So I, I read it out the King James Version because I believe this is, is, the, is the most, I, I love the way that they put this because it lines up with the rest of Scripture nicely, some of the other translations. It says, but if our gospel is hidden, some says, or it is hid, to the, it's hid to them that are lost, he says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. You see, we've got this idea that Satan's got the power to go ahead and stop people believing. No, he doesn't. That's right. Those people who don't believe, that he's, he's blinded. If people believe not, they are blinded. And then guess what? It goes on to say, lest the glorious light of the gospel should shine on them. There it is. All I need to do is bring the glorious light of the gospel to the person which believe not. When they believe, the light comes on. I don't have to ask God, oh God, please won't you unplug them so that they can believe. No, preach the gospel. Amen. That's what we do with evangelists. That's what we do when we go to people. You bring the light by bringing the gospel. You want to turn the light on in a place? You don't have to cast the devil out. You don't have to do anything. You just preach the gospel. You bring light when you bring the gospel. The glorious light of the gospel. But you see, most believers, because they haven't done even our grow course, where we talk about some of this stuff, most believers in churches today, I can, I can pull out church people and I'll say, so tell me what the gospel is. What do you mean? Well, what is the gospel? Just tell me what the gospel is. Most believers can't even answer that. It, 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 and yet, Romans chapter 1 says it so powerfully. Romans 1, I'm just back in the ESV now. Verse 16, and Paul said this so powerfully. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it, listen to this, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous or the just, some translations say, shall live by faith. You see, we've made it, and I've, I've been in a bunch of churches. Listen, you know, if you, unless you intercede, and unless you do that, we, we, we were doing a crusade in um, Mozambique, and we had a team come out from some, I think they were from the States. They joined us on this crusade. And, and no, 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 they weren't. They were a South African team. Anyhow, they came to this, this particular town, and, you know, we, you know, we did the same thing. We mostly did. We ministered the gospel, Throughout the week. So we start, we set up the crusade, we have music, we bring people, and we preach the gospel, and we have, we, and people get saved, and healing miracles happen. As we're going to see next, the team of you going to DR, you're going to watch this happen next month. In fact, it's month today. We're going to be in there doing the gospel. So um, it's like when you see the light of the gospel, when it sets people free, and people are born again, and miracles are happening, because there's this, and so... We've seen this time and time. I, I don't even know how many crusades we've done. And so we would, after the crusade, this, uh, this one guy came from this team and he came to us and said, you know why it was so powerful here tonight? I said, well, why do you think it was powerful? <laughs> and he said, well, you see, we were interceding. We have an intercession team and we were interceding and we, were, we went, went aside and we were praying for them. It's like, no. <laughs> Romans 1 says, I'm not ashamed of intercession, for intercession is the power of God unto salvation. No. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Right. You preach the gospel, people are set free. People are delivered. When you preach about the love of God, and the goodness of God, and what it says, it said so, and the, what is the gospel? It says, what is the gospel? For, it says, it says um, I'll go verse 7, it says, it is, uh, the, it is the power of God for what? For the salvation, we've dealt with that word many, many, many times. What is salvation? To be saved, to be healed, to be delivered, to be set free. All of that is what the word sozo means, soteria means. 
So what, what is the power of God for all of salvation, healing, deliverance, blah, 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 blah. Jesus said, I have come to set the captives free. All this, to heal, to open blind eyes. All of these things is in the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the good news because it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. Those who call on the name will be saved. But how are they saved? Unless they first believe. How do they believe? Unless they hear. How do they hear? It says in Romans 10, unless they are preached to. And how does somebody preach to them? Unless they are sent. That's Romans 13, I think, to, to 16 or something like it. 10 to 13. So, I mean, so when people are sent, they preach, they can hear the gospel, believe the gospel, call on the name of the Lord and be saved. Healed. Set free. Delivered. We have got to just simply as easy as that, get the gospel. Then listen to it. Why? In verse 17, it says, for in the gospel, get ready, buckle up, in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed that is by faith. The heart of the gospel is going to be very simply that righteousness cannot come to you by your good works. It's going to come by faith alone. Jesus' gift of faith, which we deal with and speak with so often. 2 Corinthians 5, God made, verse 21, God made him who had no sin to become sin for us, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. When we tell people, listen, you can't butter up and dress up and act right and be there to get righteous. You can't get saved that way. You can't keep saved that way. It's that you can only receive it by faith. By grace through faith, we are saved. Man, I, this is one of my favorite topics. I've got to be really careful because I'd keep you way past lunchtime. But, but, but I, I, I really, you know, Romans goes in, it starts there in verse chapter one, and there, it's so loaded with the teaching of righteousness by faith. But knowing, we, we, we talk about God's love, unconditional love, knowing that God's love, you know, you know we, we say it on our reaching, establishing, connecting sign over there. We reach, this is how we reach people, by the knowledge of God's unconditional love. No matter who you are, who walks in the building, whether it's a prostitute or anybody that's stuck in sin. I mean, God loves, even politicians could walk in here and we would, have, you know, and we would love them because this is, you know, that's how we reach God's unconditional love. I mean, lawyers even, jeez. <laughs> the Bible called them tax collectors, right? They were sinners and tax collectors, uh, yeah. even them. Yeah. Even those tax collectors, <laughs> IRS agents, coming whatever, you know. But I mean, it's like, so we reach people with God's unconditional love. God has loved us unconditionally. He loves every, for while we were still sinners, he loved us. That's why we can love people. They don't qualify for God's love. They are loved because He is love, etc. And we go into the importance of being rooted and grounded in this God who is love and loves us. But then we establish believers in Christ. In Christ, the anointed one. We establish believers in growing, getting established. Put off the old man. Renew your mind. That's how we get people established. Hopefully, this is part of the process. Life groups are part of the process of growing established in relationship. And then, of course, connecting them to his cause. His cause is not a mission statement or a vision statement. His cause is his cause. I said the big difference between a cause and a mission statement or a vision statement is a cause is something that you're willing to die for. It's that passionate. You are so lit on the inside. Like, I, I, I know what I'm living for. And I know what it is because I'm seeking it first. His kingdom and his righteousness. That is my cause. I'm seeking that first. What am I doing? Why do you think we get behind Brian? Brian's a gifted evangelist. I'm not a, I'm not a gifted evangelist, but Brian is. I, that's why we bring fivefold ministry, prof, a, 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 you know, evangelists, sorry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You've heard teachers here. You've heard prophets here. You've heard evangelists here. We, we have it all. We have that come over here because these gifts, these are gifts given to us to bring us to maturity to do the work of the ministry. We do the work of the ministry, not them. We do it. Evangelists, that's why we had the course in January with Brian. Brian teaching us how to do the work of the ministry, how to share the gospel, bring the light in, teach people. Simply. And we can, we've got that on video. So we got that, the ability to get established. You know, most people are intimidated because they think, oh, you know, it's so hard to, reach, to, to preach the gospel. No, not when it's good news. Not when you can walk to a sinner and with bold confidence tell them, you know what? 
God loves you and he can heal you right now. He can prove his love to you right now. Well, they're not even born again yet. Doesn't matter. God, God's willing. I've watched it happen many times on the crusade field. Blind people, everybody gets healed. It's only Christians who have too much unbelief stuck in them that can't get it. Because religion has crept in and stolen what their inheritance is. Not really stolen it, stolen it here. Stolen it here. You, you, are, you, you and I are co-heirs with Christ. We can only lose our inheritance if Jesus takes it away. And guess what? He can't. It's his inheritance. It's his covenant. We don't ever qualify for it. It's a covenant that we've stepped into. Praise God. We just get that in our hearts. Man, I'm a co-heir with Christ, right? In, a, in other words, you know, this, I just got to touch on this and then we'll wrap it up. When we, go, when we talk about the, uh, um, the, uh, uh, the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6, remember, and it says, you know, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, all of these, helmet of salvation, and, 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 and it talks about she, your, your, your feet shod, your grounding with the gospel of peace. This is what the gospel of peace is. The knowledge of his righteousness. It is our standing. You, if anybody's a fighter, you know, number one, you keep your footing. That's right. You're grounded. You know that's where it counts. Number one, you know, gospel of peace. But then everybody gets the sword of the spirit. Oh, well, it's the tactic that we're going to use it. Yes, it is. It, it's, we put the word in our mouth. Yes, we declare the word of our God. Yes, it is the sword of the spirit. But, but I love this because it says that the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, right? But I love this in the Hebrews 4. It says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It's not shadow boxing with an imaginary sword and lightsaber and pretending there's a demon in the room. Yes, I'm going to declare his word. Yes, I'm going to bind on earth what is being bound in heaven. Yes, I'm going to loose on earth what is being loosed in heaven. I'm going to declare and speak the word, confess the word, which means to say the same thing as to going to declare all of those things. But guess what? It's going to establish the thoughts and intentions of my heart. I've got to use the word to get into my heart. Like David prayed, right? Creating me a clean heart, Lord. Show me if there's any unthing, unclean thing in me. That's got to do with beliefs, people. So I want to encourage you. As you go back and listen to this again, and you are established in the truth, Satan is not a problem. Demons are not a problem. You are more than a conqueror. We are seated with Him in heavenly places. Amen. You and I are liberated unto that cause to take the gospel to the world. That's it. How can we get the gospel? Can, the, can we get us established? Can we get us, get a, are you willing to get the truth established in your heart? Will you use the sword of the Spirit to get your heart and your belief systems lined up with Him? That is where you're going to see massive change. And you have. Many of you, I know, have seen that. And as you use the, as you declare these things, let's take the gospel to the world. Let's turn on the light. Amen. Let's turn on the light. There is a cause worth living for. That when you jump out of bed, no matter what you do, whether you're selling newspapers, working at 7-Eleven, or you're making gazillions, let's get it to the gospel. Let's change, let's change, let's change. Let's do what we can to get the gospel to the world. I'm telling you, no politician can change the hearts of America or any other country. No politician. I pray for the peace of this nation, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Oh, I, I, but I can tell you what, this is what we've got to do. It's very simple because it's laid out so clearly in scripture. Take the gospel. Become proficient. You can share the gospel, it's easy. It's only, oh, I can't do that. I don't. You can. You can share it in a few words. You can live the gospel. That's right. But that's how we're going to change this world. That's how this country is going to be changed, right side up. Is because, man, I'm telling you, Jonathan, I am fired up about the story of Jonathan and his armor bearer. I love, love, love Jonathan. Because he's like, hey, maybe we should go. Maybe God can use us. He says to his armor bearer, come, let's go. And his armor bearer says, hey, I'm with you. Whatever your heart says, I'm gonna be there with you. That's powerful, right? 
And he says, he goes into the nation and he says, like, if they're going to call, Jonathan and his armor bearers say this, what stops the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few? That's the heart of David and Goliath. That's the one that says, I don't care how big you are. I've got God on my side. But we grab hold of covenant and understand this is my, he is my dad. This is who I am in him. This is what I can do. Do you become, you're not a little, you're not fodder for anybody or any politician or any lies. You're because you know who you are in Christ. And then I'm telling you, we've got an army sitting here. Right here, we've got an army. An army of people who will say, what stops the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few? I'm telling you, we saw youth and we're seeing the youth lives turned around. This, the, our youth are going to be an R and army already. Yes. They are only being prepped. They're being sharpened. T and Stacy sharpening our youth. They're getting gospel established in them. They're going to youth camp. They come back fired up for youth. A bunch of the youth are coming with us on, the cru- on this crusade. It's going to be awesome. But I'm telling you, what if your life is not kingdom first, what are you waiting for? Do you think God just saved you when you say it's abundant life? Abundant life isn't just to sit on the sidelines and go to church on a Sunday. No, no. It's about being active. No matter where you are in your growth process, take the next step, but be kingdom minded, be kingdom focused. That's what Jesus, all Jesus' parables were about the kingdom. Be kingdom focused. Lay hold of his righteousness, his love, get established. Put off the old man. Renew your mind. Remember, we aren't dealing with demons. Don't worry about demons. You know what I mean? If we come across them, big deal. Deal with them. Amen. Amen. Let's make that declaration. Father, we, we choose. Is this is an agreement. That's something that you can say amen to in your heart. But we choose, Lord, to put kingdom first. We don't just say you're our Lord, but you are our Lord. Holy Spirit, we yield to you in every way as you remind us and teach us and show us things through your Holy Spirit within. Father, we thank you that your love is so good and great. Your grace is more than enough. Your grace is more than enough. Thank you that we are empowered by your Spirit, Father. So we yield to that, Lord. We choose your righteousness and your gospel. Father, I thank you for every heart and life that are here, that as they just simply yield to righteousness, to your righteousness, your kingdom, Father, that they are going to be taking, they're going to be um, impregnated and emboldened by your Holy Spirit. We love you, Father. Just as Shannon has prayed that, I want you to, Grab this with your heart. I'm reading from the book of Isaiah, the prophet. This is an Old Testament prophecy, but you'll recognize this as a story from when Jesus got up and made a declaration, a a proclamation in the synagogue that day. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to listen first, and then we're going to declare this together over our lives. The Spirit of the Lord God is within me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. Father, I thank you that your Spirit does live inside of us. And that your purposes have always been to heal, to save, to redeem, to restore, to comfort. I thank you, Father, that as we have opened our hearts to be healed, to be delivered, to be restored, to be comforted, that we can in turn testify to what you have done in our lives. And that as we do testify as we do proclaim by the Spirit of God that is within us 
that we can proclaim liberty to the captives, that we can bind up the brokenhearted. First, we receive. And then, we give what we have received freely. I don't want anyone to leave today. If you are needing comfort or needing someone to remind you of your freedom from captivity, to speak over you that you have been set free, the door to the prison is open, has been opened. The healing has been paid for, has been accomplished. I don't want you to leave before you agree with somebody who will agree with you. And if you're here saying, well, I don't need anything, well, then you've got something to give. And I want you to find who needs what you've got. Because you didn't come just to get at church today. This body is a living, breathing, giving, taking, asking, receiving body. You're here today to give and to take, to ask and receive. Will you say this with me? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, within me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty for the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort all who mourn. To comfort. That is you. That is who you are. When we sing that song that says Waymaker, Promise Keeper, Miracle Worker, Light in the Darkness. He is saying that to you. By His Spirit in you, you make the way for people. You have the ability to keep promises. You have the ability to work miracles. And you have the ability to be the light in the darkness. It's not your power. It's not your light. It's not your promises. You're just so full of Him can't help but shine out. It's awesome. You know, um, I, I mentioned this before, but it's powerful to imagine things. And I'm not going to take time here, but just tell you, read Revelation 20. See the defeat of Satan. See his end. The scriptures I've spoken to you in the series in Ezekiel and Isaiah, where it says, we'll look upon him narrowly. Say, this is, this is him defeated nations you know when we spoke about Colossians 3 that the triumphal position imagine that triumphal position imagine Satan being dragged behind in chains defeated disarmed those have got to be truths that are in your heart amen see them you know he is around but you are his you are you are a child of God with this amazing calling. Let's yield to that. I'm telling you, you're not alone. This is a body. We have one another. We have strength here. That's what's the power of a body. You aren't in this alone. We're doing this together. We're doing this together. So thank you for joining together, bringing your gifts together to this one goal. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just um, stand up. T, you want to? You want us just to? You good? Oh, I'll just send some up here, T. 
Moms, don't forget there are two options at the back there for a, a gift for you to take home and enjoy. Um, I will mention this. There's a couple of sessions in your gift, so don't use it all up in one go. That's all I'm going to say. And if you're, uh, if you're not a mom but you want to support a, a, a mom or a baby, uh, Life's Choices has their baby bottles, fundraiser baby bottles over there. Grab one. Plan to bring it back on Father's Day. And uh, if you're here and you do want ministry, our prayer ministers are front over here. And like I said, if you came and you're like, I've, I don't need anything, I'm full, find somebody who needs something. Ask God to lead you to someone. Maybe it's a hug. Maybe it's a smile. Maybe it's a word of God. Maybe it's literally a prophetic word that's going to set somebody in a course. Don't leave here without giving what God gave you to give. Amen. We'll see you guys on Wednesday for Overflow. And uh, if you're coming, tonight is the last night for session, uh, section two of Healing University at 5 p.m. in the cafe. So remember the barbecue next Sunday fundraiser. Plan to come and have lunch with us and support our missions uh, program to the DR. That'll be fantastic. Love you guys.